The purpose of this video is to look at the start of the French Revolution through the art of neoclassical artist Jacques-Louis David and examine the predictions he made in his paintings that came true. David, born in 1748, was an ardent supporter of the French Revolution. He had a unique view of the revolution itself, starting as the official court painter of both Louis XVI before the fighting and Napoleon Bonaparte after. He worked closely alongside influential revolutionaries like Robespierre and spent a brief period in prison for his revolutionary views. His connection to so many individuals gave him an insight few others had. Before we take a look at David's paintings, we need a brief overview of the pre-revolutionary French economy. As this chart shows, France was divided into three estates. The first, clergy, the second, nobility, and the third, everyone else, from the homeless to doctors and professors. As you can see, the third estate also held the entire tax burden. The issue the third estate had with this system is represented by this cartoon, sketched by David for a newspaper. Here you can see the king, a clergy member, and a noble person riding on the back of the chained commoner. The meaning is clear. The upper class is being held up by the blood and toil of the lower classes. The lower class paid the taxes and the tithes that supported the luxurious lifestyles of the upper classes. The next painting we'll look at is called The Oath of the Herati, created in 1784, five years before the revolution. This painting depicts Brutus arming his sons so they can overthrow the Roman Empire, hence neoclassicism or new classics. The son, who represent the third estate, are willing to fight and die for a republican government, something David and many other educated French sought after. David also makes it seem that violence is inevitable. The women sitting in the darkness clearly understand that something sinister is about to happen. This sequel, titled The Lictors Bring Brutus the Bodies of His Sons, painted four years before the revolution, shows the price that the French people would have to pay for their victory over the monarchy. Brutus's sons turned away from the Republican fighters and joined with the Emperor. Once the Emperor lost, it was Brutus himself who charged him with treason and had them executed. The brightest spot in this painting is the grieving women, and here David shows that death would be inevitable in this revolution, that it would be a civil war pitting families against each other. The last picture is of the Tennis Court Oath, which represented a major victory for the Third Estate and ultimately led to the overthrow of the king. In the very front, you can see a priest and a nobleman shaking hands, agreeing to work together and create a new constitution. However, David understood that this oath would not bring lasting peace. Looking at the top right window, the viewer can see dark clouds on the horizon, a clear distinction from the sunny day portrayed on the left. As we know, the most violent part of this revolution, the Reign of Terror, occurred just four years later.